Hannah Gadsby, welcome to 7.30. Thank you for having me. Now, the last time I saw you live was your show, Body of Work. Now, before that, you had presented quite a lot of dark material. You described that one as a feel-good show. So you'd done some dark material. You were now doing some brighter material. So where do you go to next? Obviously, back to dark. <laughs> Um, it's, it's a t <laughs> you know, I, try, I tried the feel-good situation. It worked for me for the moment, but I feel like it's a dark world and so we need, we need some darkness to match. Your new show, though, is called Woof, which doesn't sound very dark. What's it all about? Depends on how you um, say it. You know, some <laughs> dogs say woof and it's very menacing. Yes, so are you, are you, are you saying you're bringing us a menacing show? It's a show that I'm writing that is matching this moment, uh, which is to say, Oof, there's a lot going on, I don't understand what's happening in the world, and uh, I feel like the apocalypse is approaching, so... Oof. Let's talk about you then a little bit more. I mean, you, at one point, you made a decision to stop telling self-deprecating jokes. What was wrong with self-deprecating jokes? Look, I think effectively there's, you know, essentially there's nothing wrong. It's quite a healthy impulse to, to be self-deprecating. But whether, when you, you know, sort of live in a system where, you know, the self-deprecation is, is compounded by broader deprecation that doesn't come from you, it, I just felt jack of that, you know? It's sort of like, well, hang on, I'll, I might just not do that. And it felt, it felt very good. But I struggle to live up to my um, very brash statement. You know, really, as, a, as a, an Australian, I, it is my default. Um, so I, do, I still dabble, um, <laughs> but not in terms of, of the parts of me that sort of represent marginalised communities. So as a white person, I'm cool with talking about how crap I am. But as a queer person, hmm. I'll give that a wide berth. And do you ever make jokes yourself that you consider to be what, what a previous generation would have called off? Do you make off jokes? Sure, but not off to me. <laughs> never? You never make a joke and you think, oh, I think I've just stepped over my own line there? <laughs> yeah, look, I'm very careful. We're living in an extraordinary moment when it comes to this because the context of what you say and do are shifting beyond your control forevermore. Uh, you know, the, the archiving of, of what we say and do is so <laughs> intense in a way that it wasn't previously. Uh, you know, comedians working in the 80s and 90s said things that went out in the ether and they kept moving like a shark. Now we're being pinned down to everything that we say and so I, I just think it's a, a no-brainer to be deliberate and considerate about what you do because ultimately you don't want to cause more harm than you intend. Sometimes I really enjoy causing harm to, like, I don't know, Picasso because I think he's fine, he's dead. And, but, you know, you, you, <laughs> I, I don't mind being careful. I want to ask you about your early life. Were you a funny child? Mm. Look, people laughed at me. So there's an argument to be made that I was a funny child, but my lack of awareness why people were laughing at me uh, sort of <laughs> is a darker undercurrent to that. But uh, I think that's how I developed my, um, you know, performance strategies, you know. People laugh and then I go, well, why? And maybe I'll do it again because people enjoy laughing. You know, what a sad clown. On the contrary, I think it's an incredibly brave thing to do to stand up for the first time in front of people and tell a joke. Do you remember when you took that incredibly brave first step? No, I was never a brave step. It was always a panic step. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I need to say something. <laughs> um, ten tension is... is I, I only ever wanted to, to, to break it. Um, now I've built a career around creating my own tension, which it turns out I'm really good at. Um, I really... F I remember the first time that I did comedy. It was part of the Raw Comedy um, program in competition. 
and it was in Wollongong at the university there. And I took to the stage like a duck to water and I have never taken to anything. Like, I ended up taking up comedy because I couldn't even work in hospitality. Too slow, too vague. Uh, and so, you know, my options of careers were really thinning out. So it was a whim that has worked out very well, but I wouldn't call it a strategy. And if I had my time over, um, I'd be, I'd have to do it again because I can't imagine I'd be good at anything. I want to ask you about the, some of the things you said about your diagnosis for autism spectrum disorder in 2022, because y you were talking about it partly, you said, because your experience didn't match popular assumptions about it. So what is it that we got wrong about you and have people got better since? I, I wouldn't say it's about me personally. I think it was about the, the conversation around um, neurodivergent people. Uh, and I think that has changed. It is changing. It is... People are get, really getting a grip on it. Uh, I don't want to take credit, but, you know, g'day. No, it's a joke. Um, <laughs> sorry, can't help myself. But uh, <laughs> it's... It was very much limited to, you know, uh, little boys who like trains and dinosaurs. And whilst there is an element of that, sure, it is... The brain is a, is a huge misunderstood, never to be understood situation. And I think it's important that we just acknowledge that people think differently and therefore they're going to operate differently. And expecting everyone to stick to social norms all of the time is just... It's delusional. I want to come back to your new show because that's why I'm talking to you today. So it's been fabulous for me to go back and look at your all of the shows because all, all kind of jam them all together in one day since since the live show. But you didn't tell us very much about Wolf. So I want to go back to the beginning and I want you to tell us a little bit more about what we're going to see in Wolf. You know, my shows are always written on stage, I have, I have a lot of ideas, don't you worry, I, I'm really bringing it, but it will find itself uh, in um, the first six months of this year. And it's uh, the themes that I'm, I'm looking at, um, a bit of grief, yummy. Um, there's a, a lot of confusion, um, double yummy, and a little dash of the apocalypse <laughs> impending. Hannah Gadsby, good luck with the show and thanks for talking to us. My absolute pleasure. <laughs>